Houdini allows us to quickly align one object to geometry components of another object by enabling what it calls the align state. When we have a transform tool or the handle tool active, we can enter the align state by simply tapping the semicolon key, or we can right click over the handle, go to align, and then choose start orientation picking. Once we're in the align state, we can see the handles get grayed out, and we get these cuboid handles each shown in its own corresponding axis color. To start orientation picking, we simply hover the cursor over the geometry that we want to align to, and as we hover over different components of the target geometry, we get this alignment indicator showing us the position that the object will be placed at and how that object will be orientated. So if I click anywhere on this top face of this wedge-shaped object, we see the switch gets transformed to that position of the indicator and the y-axis of the object gets aligned to the orientation of that indicator. If I tap the semicolon key again to re-enter the aligned state, I can click on one of these other faces and we see the switch gets positioned and orientated to the center of that face. Let's snap and align the switch back to the top face of this wedge. And now with the switch object's handles aligned locally to the object itself, I can move it along its XZ plane to position it anywhere on this face. We can snap and align an object to either faces, edges or points of target geometry. So if I select this control knob here and tap the semicolon key to enter the align state, when I hover over an edge of the target geometry, I get an indicator on the center point of that edge, and this line is showing me the normal direction of the edge. And this is the angle which the source geometry will be aligned to. I can just left click over this indicator, and the selected object gets positioned at that indicator position, and its local Y axis gets aligned in the same direction as the indicator line. And I can do exactly the same thing with points on the target object. So if I tap the semicolon key again and re-enter the align state and hover the cursor over points on the target geometry, we get an indicator showing the position and alignment the selected object will be snapped to. And I can just left click over this to snap the selected object to that point position. And just like when we snap to a face or an edge, the selected object's Y axis gets aligned to the normal direction of that point component. I'll select this switch object here and tap the semicolon key to enter the align state again. And you notice that when we enter the align state, we get some on-screen prompts at the bottom of the viewport with some instructions on how we can use this orientation picking tool. The first of these is to click on a component to move and rotate to align with it. And this is what we've just done. But the second of these is to hold down shift whilst clicking on a target geometry component to rotate without moving. So if I hold on shift whilst I click on the top face of this wedge, we see that the switch object gets rotated to match the angle of that face, but it doesn't get moved to that surface. If I tap the semicolon key again and then hold down shift and click on this front face, we see the switch gets rotated so that its local Y axis gets aligned to the normal direction of that face, but it doesn't get moved to that surface. I'll tap the semicolon key again to enter the align state, and we can see the next of these instructions at the bottom of the screen tells us that if we hold down a control key, we can move the object to the target position without rotating it. So as I hold down a control key and click on the top face of this wedge, we see that the switch moves to that position, but it doesn't get rotated to align with the face. I'll just reset the transforms of this switch object by holding down control and clicking on the translate and rotate parameter labels. And I'll tap the semicolon key again to enter the align state. Now, if we look at the last of these instructions at the bottom of the viewport, it lets us know that we can hold down control and shift to rotate the selected object to point at that target component. So when I hold down the control and shift keys and click on this point at the bottom corner of this wedge object, we see that the selected object gets rotated so that its Y axis is pointing towards that component. And if I tap the semicolon key and select this edge on the opposite side whilst holding control and shift, we see that the switch gets rotated to point at that edge component. The default alignment axis for orientation picking is the Y axis, but we can easily change this to be a different axis. So let's just quickly move the switch and align it to the top face of this wedge, which I can do exactly as I did before by tapping the semicolon key and just clicking on the top face of the wedge. In this case, the alignment of the switch's Y axis to this face as normal works nicely for us, but Let's say that now we've positioned this switch in the center here, that we want to turn this dial to point at the corner of this wedge. We could use the align state's point at operation to do that, 
And so I'll do that by tapping the semicolon key and then holding down control and shift whilst clicking on this corner point. But that really doesn't work as we want because it's still aligning the switch's Y axis to look at that corner. I'll just undo that. And so what we want to do is to be able to tell Houdini to make this switch object's Z axis point at this corner. We can easily change the primary axis from being the Y axis to another axis by entering the align state and then holding down control and clicking on one of these colored cuboid handles. And when I do that, we see the handle changes from that cuboid shape to a pointed pyramid shape. And now when I hold down control and shift and click on the target point, the switch gets rotated so that its Z axis is pointing at that corner point component. So this has worked pretty well in this instance, but there will be times when you use this point at orientation mode where you need to define the orientation of the secondary axis. So for example, sometimes when you try and do something like we did here, the object you're trying to orientate might end up on its side or at a different rotation around that primary axis to the angle that you want. And that's because accurately orientating objects typically requires specifying two axes. This might be easier to see if I switch to wireframe mode, which I'll do by tapping the W key, and I'll tap the semicolon key to enter the align state. And we can see that we still have the primary axis set to be the Z axis. But because we've only specified a single axis so far, the object can essentially have any rotation around that primary axis. So we can define a secondary axis to specify how the object is rotated around the primary axis. And we do that by just clicking on either of these other two axis handles, but without holding down any keys. The handle turns yellow to indicate that it's set as a secondary axis. And then we can do one of two things. The first option is to click on a component to match the alignment of the secondary axis to the normal direction of the selected component. So if you look at the direction being shown by this alignment indicator, now if I click on this, you see the switch object gets rotated around its primary axis to the point where its X axis is aligned with the alignment indicator I just clicked on. The second option for aligning the secondary axis is to enter the align state and click and drag on that secondary axis handle. And then as I drag over different object components, then the secondary axis will orientate to look at that component that I'm currently hovering over. And then I can just release left mouse button to set that secondary axis orientation. I'll switch back to smooth wire shader mode by tapping the W key. And let's look at another quick example of when specifying a secondary axis orientation can be useful. So I've got this dome shape base and I'm gonna move this switch here to the center point by tapping the semicolon key. And then I'll hold down the control key to move the switch to that position, but without rotating it. Now I want to be able to rotate the switch to look at one of these points on the base here. If I tap the semicolon key to start orientation picking, control click on the Z axis handle to set this as the primary axis, and then hold down the control and shift keys to use the pointer operation, and then click on one of these points. Then the switch gets rotated to look at that point, but it's being rotated in all three axes. Whereas I want it to continue to be orientated straight up along the world Y axis, and I want to just turn the switch object around that Y axis to look in the direction of that point, but without pointing down at it. So I'll just undo that and I'll tap the semicolon key to enter the align state again. But this time, rather than specifying the Z axis to be the primary axis and using the pointer operation, I'll make the Y axis the primary axis by control clicking on it. And now I'll click on the Z axis handle to specify this as the secondary axis. And then I'll just drag from that handle to select the point that I want to be orientated to. And now the switch is behaving as I'd like and it's maintaining its vertical alignment. By setting the Y axis as the primary axis, I've effectively locked that axis. And so the switch is now constrained to only being able to rotate around that locked axis. It's no longer going to look down at this point that I'm clicking, which is below the switch. It's just gonna rotate around the Y axis towards the direction of the component point that I've selected. When we're using the align state, we're actually transforming the handle. So when the handle is attached to the geometry, the whole geometry gets transformed. But if we detach a handle from the geometry, we can use the align state to reposition a handle without moving the geometry. So let's take a look at this. I'll make a copy of this wedge shape base and I'll do that by selecting it and then I'll tap the F key whilst hovering over the network editor to frame the view to that node. Then I'll hold down Alt and click and drag the node to make a copy. And then I'll just move this copy over to the side in the viewport. 
Now, let's say that I want to position these two front corners together, and I want to be able to rotate this second base panel around the corner. So with the handle tool selected, I'll tap the apostrophe key to detach the handle, and then I'll tap the semicolon key to enter the align state, and then I'll hold down the control key and click on the bottom corner point of this base to snap the handle to that position, but without rotating it. I'll then tap the apostrophe key to reattach the handle to the geometry, and now I'll tap the semicolon key to enter the align state again, and I'll hold down the control key, and I'll click on the bottom corner of this base to snap my selected wedge object to this point. Now I can just rotate this base around this corner to the angle that I want. So we can see from this example that when we use the align state and orientation picking to align one object to another, the operation uses the object's current handle position and not its pivot position as the point which gets snapped to the selected component. It's also important to note that the current alignment of the handle will be the basis for the orientations made when orientation picking. So say if I wanted to now rotate this wedge object to be at 90 degrees to this one, then with the handle currently aligned to the object, I can just tap the semicolon key to enter the align state and set the primary axis to be the Y axis and the Z axis to be the secondary axis and then click on this side face to align the Z axis of the current handle to the normal of this side face. But if I undo that and set the handle to be aligned to the world by right clicking over the handle and selecting world, and then I'll tap the semicolon key to enter the align state and then click on this side face again, we see that the wedge object gets rotated through a full 90 degrees because it's taking the world Z aligned handle and rotating it to be aligned with the normal of this face, which is pointing along the world X axis. We don't actually see the handle itself rotate in this instance because when the handle's aligned to the world, it always remains aligned with the world. But if I just undo that and redo that a couple of times, you can see how the object has in fact been rotated through 90 degrees and that we get a different result when we perform the same orientation picking procedure using the object aligned handle versus the world aligned handle. So that's a look at how we can use the align state and orientation picking to quickly snap objects and handles to geometry components.